Well, good afternoon and welcome to the workshop. So it might not seem like a long time since we last spoke, but time has gone. And uh, yeah, I don't have a huge amount to show for it, I'm afraid. The last time you saw me doing any machining in here, I was setting up the Centec in the horizontal mode to mill some axle boxes. So here's the horizontal milling setup. I'm using a four inch diameter cutter that's five eighths of an inch wide. And um, I've got quite a few cutters, but this is the only one I've got, which actually leaves a very smooth surface. The other ones score the work, which I'm guessing is burrs or dings or something on the teeth. Um, and as you dial the hand wheels, you can see that line moving around like an etch sketch um, Actually, this worked out fine on the aluminium, but if you noticed on the aluminium machining, I was doing a very high RPM. And so I didn't notice that only a few of the teeth they're actually cutting um, which is a bit of a problem really, because uh, to cut cast iron, I need to be at a much lower RPM, about 100 RPM, which means the fact that only four teeth are cutting means the feed would need to be extremely slow at 90 RPM to, to cut properly. So I can crank the speed up on this, and I did, to about 400 RPM, because only about a quarter of the teeth are cutting, to maintain the feed rate of about uh, eight inches a minute um, to, have, to do the cuts because there's so much material to take off. Uh, but basically, the machine wasn't that happy about that and neither was the, neither was the cutter. I saw sparks and things coming off of it. So um, as much as I want to continue with this, and I, and I may do, uh, I have a feeling I'm going to have to revert back to a vertical milling until I get cutters which are slightly less eccentric. Um, I also managed to then jam on the uh, lock nut onto the arbor, so now I can't change it to any other cutters. And I, I know it's reverse threaded, and I have spent a good deal of time trying to get that off, but unfortunately it's stuck on there quite badly. So uh, I've put that aside for the moment and switched back to the vertical milling mode and had a bit more success on that. So this is what I started off with. This is uh, a slice of continuously cast iron uh, that's about an inch thick. And I needed to end up with a block about this big, which is about one and a half inch by one and a quarter inches, something like that, uh, and about 850 thou thick. And I machined almost all of this on the horizontal mill, including this slot, um, which came out okay. But then it's at that point I realized I, I'm, I'm take, it's taking a very, very long time. This slot took something like 42 passes um, to get down to this, because it needs to be uh, both on both sides and it was just a lot of hard work but this is the keep and this keep slots in here so this is the axle box you've ended up with and the advantage of doing this rather than having a single piece of cast iron with a hole drilled through is that I will be running a pin through this to hold them together but then when I want to separate the axle box away from the axle I can just knock that pin out and separate these two halves and I don't need to take the wheel off, which probably isn't a massive issue on the coupled wheels, but on the driving wheels of the locomotive, I'll have that crank axle in the middle. And I think once I've got that ready, I really don't want to do much in the way of interfering with it. So this is the first one. And now I've got uh, another three to make using uh, another three of these and make another three keeps using this. I also have the material for the tender axle boxes, but Given how much work this is taking, I'm trying hard not to think of that right now. Squaring these axle box blanks up is just a lot of traversing the cutter over the sides. I'll be doing one side rotating, one side rotating all the way around, and then I will poke out the end and use a long series milling cutter to mill the ends. So I don't know how um, entertaining that's gonna to be to watch. I'll show you how, roughly how it's going here. I won't take a massive cut, but I'll take one that's going to be big enough to show you what's going on. So just imagine that times about a thousand to get all of these blanks to the same dimension. And, and when I've got them, I'll replace them one by the other until they're all square and they're all the same height and same width and so on. It's just squaring up stock, basically. I'll come back to you when I'm cutting the slots. 
One thing that became very apparent when I was taking deep cuts, because with this cutter running at about 350 RPM, I can take cuts of about an eighth of an inch off of that cast iron. As you can see, there's lots of swarf here. But I was seeing there being a bit of a spring on the table as I got to the end of a traverse or something. And I did a little bit of looking around and I noticed that I'm missing a grub screw here and on the back I was miss one of them was broken off so it, it couldn't be tightened at all and one of them was missing and there's only four grub screws on the back so the uh, the x or well, this 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 direction the y axis um, was uh, only working with two grub screws at any one time and this one is only working with I think three uh, so I had to figure that one out I bought myself some threaded rod for the extra long grub screws to, to slot them in the end, but also found that there is a seller online, BA Bolts, who um, does one inch long 2BA Allen cap, Allen head cup grub screws. Now, these need to be dog headed and they only need to be seven eighths of an inch long. So I've got a little, I need to machine these, um, but I'm going to use these and fit these to the the y-axis and then I'm going to have to make some slotted ones out of the rod that should be arriving anytime soon. Oh, I also got some stainless nuts because I was missing some of those. Oh, I also got uh, a letter punch set been made in the UK uh, by John Pryor, I think, um, because I'll need to punch all of the axle boxes to make sure that they're matching up to their relative slots and each other. And lastly, I picked up Screw Cutting in the Lathe Workshop Practice Series. Uh, and this is because this, if I zoom you out, here is the, oops, a bit too much. Here is the bogey. And this here is a slot for a bogey pin. Now, the bogey pin is a piece of 5 8 inch steel, which will run in this slot, but then needs to be threaded on either end. And I bought some, uh, half inch bscy 26 tpi nuts because these are only a couple of pounds and it was far cheaper than buying the the tap and i don't see myself using these threads that often then i realized of course i need to then make that the pin and thread it on both sides and i thought isn't that a great opportunity to learn about single point screw cutting in the lathe so got that to look forward to too